We unpack We unpack We unpack Coming to your live boxing ego unpack Yeah We unpack We unpack We unpack Wow Two time gold medalist and Olympian from Cuba, Robisi Romero, who defeated Shakur Stevenson in the last Olympics, just lost his pro debut. Crazy. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, boxing is such a crazy sport. Theater of the no unknown. You really don't know what's going to happen until you watch. You know, we've seen some crazy. I, I, I feel like I was one of the first people in boxing who referred to this year as the year of the upset. And in true year of the upset fashion, it's crazy. Two-time Olympic gold medalist. So we're talking about a guy who has... A Guillermo Rigandao, you know, also of Cuba, a uh, Vasily High Tech Lomachenko type of um, pedigree in the amateurs. And he does his pro debut, two gold medals. He has more than 400 fights in the amateurs, turned pro, and then he just lost to Aiden Gonzalez, a kid from Denver, Colorado, who had a record of 4 2 and 2. You know, this is insane. Insane. He got dropped in the first round. Robisi Romero. I mean, Ramirez, excuse me. He got dropped in the first round. And, you know, he got back up. The Some of the other rounds were pretty competitive. And then, you know, long story short, he ended up losing. And this is his first fight. So, shout out to, to Aiden Gonzalez. These underdogs is not playing. You know. And... I feel bad for Shakur Stevenson. I'm going to tell you why. Shakur Stevenson was a guy who, you know, was touted as somebody who could win in his division in the Olympics. And he gets to the very end, the gold medal match versus Robesi Ramirez, who already had a gold medal, you know, and they fight. The fight's competitive and Shakur Stevenson ended up losing. So he left with a silver medal. And he was heartbroken. He was even, you know, crying, said, man, I worked too hard for this. And he took it rough. He got back in the gym and turned pro, and he's been doing good. And he's looking, like, better and better. He's already um, improved. But I know this particular fight, Robese Ramirez, was a grudge match. And when it was announced that Robese Ramirez had signed to top rank, most people put two and two together and figured it out that this would clearly be something that they would build for a grudge match. You know, I beat you in the amateurs and it cost you a gold medal. Had you distraught, now see where you guys are since Shakur Stevenson turned pro before him. And with it, with Robesi Ramirez losing his pro debut, I'm not going to say it's impossible or improbable. The fight still might happen, but at the end of the day it's not what the fight would have been because just with this just losing to a guy just where Shakur Stevenson's at and Robisi Ramirez losing his pro debut is not a good look you know he just lost to a guy with between losses and draw he had he had the same amount of losses and draws combined as he had wins four two and two or whatever so you know who's gonna who's gonna favor Robisi Ramirez to defeat Shakur Stevenson at this point, you know, and that would have been good redemption when someone else beat him to it. So I feel bad for Shakur Stevenson. The other thing I feel bad at is he's getting ducked. You know, I like Oscar Valdez, but Valdez moved up. To me, that's a duck move, and I'm gonna explain why. I can understand fighters can't make weight, things of that sort. You know, Valdez maybe he wants to give his himself a break. He's also a two peat Olympian. And he, let's say he wants to move up to 130. That's fine. He wants to leave featherweight. But he literally said, he should have never said this in my view. 
He says, hey, I'll fight Josh Warrington or Carl Frampton. Those are great fights, and, you know, I owe it to the fans or, or whatever he said. And since he didn't get those particular two fights, then he moves up. So that that throws any potential excuse or anything out of the window because Carl Frampton, he lost to Josh Warrington, and Carl Frampton has no belt. So how can you not fight Shakur Stevenson, who has no belt, but you're willing to fight Carl Frampton, who has multiple losses, lost to Leo Santa Cruz, you know, and he also lost to Josh Warrington, things like that. So it makes no sense. He's not like this big, huge cash cow, cash draw. He's had some pretty bad performances. I think he even talked about retiring. So that's not a good move, in my opinion, from Oscar Valdez, just because he would have been better off just fighting Shakur Stevenson, then moving up. Similar to what Jamal Charlo did when Julian J-Rock was his mandatory. That's the same situation. J-Rock was the mandatory. He's like, oh, you got to fight me, Charlo. You got to fight me, you turkey. And Charlo had already declared that he was moving up in weight, I think, after the Austin Trout fight. So before the mandatory, the IBF or whoever ordered J-Rock as his mandatory, he already said he was moving up in weight. But he did what was right and took care of his mandatory, so there was no confusion. And then he knocked out J-Rock, who later became a unified champion, beating Hurd in one of the upsets of the year. Again, year of the upset. And then J-Rock, um, you know, took the appropriate fights to build himself back up, became a champion. Meanwhile, Charlo moved up to the next division. In my opinion, uh, Charlo and J-Rock, what they did, that's exactly what, what should have happened, in my view, from Oscar Valdez. You got this dangerous mandatory. It would be a good fight. And he's calling you out. Shakur Stevenson's calling you out. And you 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 can't use the excuse of I can't make weight no more. Cause you told the whole world that you would make the weight for two other people who definitely aren't big in America. You know, Josh Warrington and Carl Frampton has seen better days. So it really makes no sense that you're willing to fight them unless you like their style. You know, it's kind of similar to what Canelo's doing. And they actually, they train in the same gym. It's kind of the same thing. It's like Canelo, he he doesn't seem like anxious to fight Demetrius Andrade, but he has no problem fighting Rocky Fielding. You know, he has no problem fighting Jacobs, who's been stopped. He has no problem fighting Kovalev, who's been stopped. Why not fight Andrade, you know? So it's just like a lot of picking and choosing. So I feel bad for Shakur Stevenson. Josh Warrington, another person who's pretty much openly ducking Shakur Stevenson. Um, Shakur has been calling him out. He said, I would love the opportunity. I would love to fight you in the UK. And Josh Warrington, I seen he recently did an interview, said, I'll give him 12 rounds of hell. But before that, he said, Shakur Stevenson got to get a belt. You know, and anytime people start talking about, you know, money before the negotiations even start and this guy got to get a belt like, like they're the matchmakers and they're the promote, you know, you already know they don't want no smoke by and large so i feel bad for shakur stevenson because like i said he only got 12 fights or whatever it is he has opponents pulling out two three times two different two three different opponents people don't want to give him credit for that people don't give him credit for stepping up and fighting christopher pitbull diaz and schooling him and making it look easy people keep talking about his personal life getting in the stupid ass fucking fight at the gas station and you know acting like he like he's not a young kid like we didn't all do dumb shit when we were in our early 20s and on top of getting ducked and now he has a grudge match that signed to his label so everyone thought it was a for show thing that robisi ramirez versus shakur stevenson be built up and we don't see it and then here's another thing top rank this is what they do when it from what i've seen when it comes to black fighters black fighters with top rank tend to have the harder schedule tim bradley terrence crawford shakur stevenson shakur stevenson barely had any fights but when there's a perceived cash cow or somebody who can you know they think that that top rank thinks has a fan base especially if they're uh, fair-skinned caucasian or uh, eastern european or something top rank seems to baby their schedule a lot more because another person would be mick Connellan. you know they were all in the same olympics together why isn't mick Connellan? stepped up and fought uh, a Christopher Pitbull Diaz on a pay-per-view card, Miracon, Terrence Crawford, but Shakur Stevenson has. How come 
Mick Connellan, you're not putting him in there with Shakur Stevenson, you know, because they know Mick Connellan has the Irish, he has Irish fans, and, and you know, they're trying, they're putting him on St. Patty's Day events and fight weeks and stuff like that and they don't they don't have confidence that he'll beat Shakur Stevenson so they don't want to fuck up the bag or mess up the money you know but I would like to see Mick Connell step up in terms of class of opponent like Shakur Stevenson is having so you know all in all the crazy Robisi Ramirez it's not really crazy if you watch boxing this happens guys like Orlando Salido he got knocked out in his first pro debut and lost uh, Nonito Donaire lost his second fight. See, I know this stuff off the top of my head. Nonito Donaire, you know, he turned pro and then lost his very second fight and then didn't lose for 11 years. You know, had a, a nice solid run until he fought like Guillermo Rigondeau. Um, there's a lot of guys. So Rung Vasai lost his pro debut. So some people have lost. I think Bernard Hopkins, if I'm not mistaken, this is all off the top of my dome. You, you know, you can uh, research this, but I'm pretty sure Bernard Hopkins lost his pro debut, too. So it's not the end of the world for the kid, Robisi Ramirez. But I will say this, not to stereotype, but some of the Cubans um, have an issue um, transitioning as pros because they're so used to the amateur style and they master that. And this situation with Robisi Ramirez is very similar to Vasil Lomachenko. The pros is pros, amateurs, amateurs. No matter what, they, they can try to make it um, the same or remove headgear and all this bullshit, but it's a different ball game. You got to get your experience. You look at Audley Harrison, heavyweight. He's a gold medalist. Wilder's a bronze medalist. And Wilder knocked him out in the first round violently. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game. And Robisi Ramirez made casual mistakes not being equipped for the, the um, moment. You know, pulling straight back and got uh, got hit with a knockdown, flash knockdown, whatever you want to call it. So that wasn't a good look to lose in his pro debut. Again, it, it happens. It's happened to some great fighters, and they bounce back. So we have to see what was written for him. But he's going to have to adapt and adjust to the pro style, similar to Lomachenko when he fought Salido. He thought, oh, this guy, he, he lost, like I said, Salido lost his pro debut. You know, oh, this, you know, Gamboa whooped him. I'm, he's a gold medalist. I got two gold medals. Uh, I'm going to run through Salido. So it's easy to have that that confidence and false confidence and bravado. And then when he got in there with Salido, thinking shit was sweet, it really wasn't. And he lost his second fight. So these fighters got to be dangerous. I mean, they got to be careful because it's dangerous as a pro, you know, versus the amateur. Things change. You have to, because even look at Shakur Stevenson, when he was fighting at the Stub Hub in like the first, second, third fight, he wasn't even getting knockouts in some of those. You got to make adjustments. You got to adapt. And people are saying, oh, the kid has no power. But then if you look at him right now, his power is showing up, you know, so you just got to acclimate. This is why when fighters fighting, you know, abroad or wherever they they acclimate and they get to England or Japan a week, two weeks early or whatever, so they can adjust to the climate, the time zones and, you know, these different types of things. And the, the same adjustment acclimation process is needed for um for fighters who are coming out the amateurs it don't matter if you have two gold medals motherfuckers in the pros they don't look at stuff like that you know they're not like you know you have to you have to prove what you're talking about you can't just look at the oh he got two gold medals because you know i i could go deep on this subject and, and maybe i'll talk about it more but some people have gold medals that arguably shouldn't like anthony joshua anthony joshua a lot of people thought he lost his gold medal match go watch it you know a lot of people don't know the history and meanwhile you had guys like roy jones jr in seoul korea and floyd mayweather who clearly got robbed you know so having two gold medals i'm not saying i'm not ever trying to make it like it's a bad thing however it's still an adjustment everybody clarissa shields she got two gold medals and she had to make adjustments as a pro you know she had to make adjustments and get used to the differences. And, you know, we'll see what happens with Robisi Ramirez to see how his Cuban style adapts to the to the pros. The last thing I'll say is I read a study and it was about entrepreneurship and business moguls and stuff. And it was about basically how come A plus and A, a students end up in life historically factually a lot of a plus a students end up working for c 
or C plus students, right? And I thought it was interesting. So I watched this whole little like um, special on it or whatever, like a short video or whatever. And they were saying the reasons why A plus students and A minus students later in life, you know, these are valedictorians and stuff. They um, end up working for people who average C, C, C plus grades, B minus, stuff like that. Like basically didn't have as good grades. Right. And the reason is a lot of people academically are great test takers. They can read chapters one through seven, memorize the information. And when it appears on test, they can they have it memorized. But some of those people lack in other departments like improvisational skills, Im improvisational skills or uh, creativity or thinking outside the box, those types of things versus the guy or girl who has C grade, C plus, maybe they're more um, innovative in those ways. So when it comes to taking risks and business and stuff like that, some of the A, the A, A plus students, they're so by the book, they don't take the, you know, they're not willing to take the risk. You know, they're not willing to take a chance. Um, if something pops up, the unexpected, that'll ruin their, you know, their whole endeavor versus the B or C student you know they roll with the punches a little bit better so that's kind of what it reminds me of in, in the amateur some people they can get the gold medals and stuff like that because they know what the amateur system is they're training you know for years for this particular event the olympics is every four years you know so they're training for this one moment and that's that but the pros is different you you could be on a different scale you could be fighting you know, when you first turn pro, you could be fighting three, four five times in a year. You get what I'm saying? And you also have to deal with the different length rounds, you know, work your way up to a six, eight rounder, 10 rounder, 12 rounder, you know, maybe start at a four or something. So it's just totally different. And I think that's why some people get some people are, like I said, they're preparing and, and they're Olympians. They can do well for themselves and get Olympic gold medals, but it doesn't amount to success as a pro and boxing is weird like that you know you'll see a guy who who's eating out of a trash can and got no gold medals you know didn't even have cutlery eating out of a trash can and then he'll sleep a guy who's a gold medal because again a gold medal that you ain't putting that gold medal in your chin so no headgear fighting a monstrous puncher who has been through the ringer and has mad experience like let's say like a darnell boone he'll fuck around and sleep you it don't matter what you talking about you know he got cracks there's certain guys like that they'll ruin your whole career so this is the year of the upset let me know what you guys think drop your thoughts in the comments section row bc ramirez loses and we unpack baby so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing